Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. continue our discussion on uh, one dimensional convection diffusion equation and we continue discussing about the exponential scheme. So, this is where we ended our last discussion. So, we were talking about uh, exponents coming up in the coefficients of the different uh, terms and that is what makes it extremely expensive. So, we will find ways of reducing the expense. So, instead of having a perfect uh, exponential profile fit, let us see whether we can go for something like piecewise fits or less complicated profile fits. All right. However, they conform closely to the uh, exponential distribution as far as possible. So, let us take one of the coefficients say the A e. So, from our previous discussion you remember that it was written like this and uh, we would prefer to write it in a uh, non dimensional form uh, where we put it as a e by d e to compensate it becomes p e over here in the numerator because p e is f by d and uh, then this is essentially a non dimensional form. right? Now, if we consider this equation to be of the form y equal to f x. So, let us say x is nothing but Peclet number then this becomes x by e to the power of x minus 1. So, this is a function and we need to understand how this function behaves over a wide range of x, how y behaves. So, that is the idea. Now, uh, let us say that when Peclet number becomes very strongly positive, so x tends to infinity. In that case, uh, what would happen to y? y would tend to 1 by e to the power of x where x tends to infinity. So, we could not get to this form straight away. Actually, if you substitute x tends to infinity in this expression, then you have an infinity by infinity form. So, you have to go for the lap Pittals rule and then you take a derivative of the numerator and the denominator separately. So, d d x of the numerator then divided by d d x of the, of the denominator with the same limit applied and that should give you the identical limit as the original one as per the La Pittals rule. So, by La Pittal it you come to this expression and you work out this limit and that tends to 0. That means, for very large Peclet number, the A e by d will tend to 0. So, we were talking about very large positive Peclet number, remember. Now, it could also be very large negative Peclet number when the flow changes direction and becomes opposite, right. So, in that situation, what is it that we will have? We will have y tending to minus x. Why is it? Because uh, in the numerator you will have uh, in the numerator you will have uh, x which is very large it is tending to, to negative infinity and in the denominator it is e tending to minus infinity which is very small. So, it is x by minus 1 which is left and therefore y will tend to minus x. So, we are done with the extremely large positive and negative values of x. Now, what about x uh, in the range of very small Peclet number? So, x tending to 0, again you will see if you directly substitute it will become a 0 by 0 form indeterminate. So, use Lar Pittals rule and then put limit 
x tends to 0 take the derivative. So, you will be left with 1 by e to the power of x which gives you a 1. So, now you have 3 limiting values for different ranges of Peclet numbers. If you try to put these values what do you get finally out of it? Let us try to make a plot. So, y which is essentially p e uh, no sorry y is not p e rather y along the y axis what we are plotting is a by d e alright. p is x. So, x or p e is along this direction of course, this is y certainly and what we have got uh, is that at large Peclet numbers uh, we have got a distribution like this positive here and uh, what happens in the negative sign you have to have a 45 degree line here and then you have uh, again for very large negative values you, you need to have a line here. right? So, this is what you have got because y equal to minus x will give you a line of this kind. right? And what do you have at uh, x tending to 0? You have a y equal to 1. So, let us mark this as 1. So, that is the intercept here. How about the exponential plot itself? The exponential plot may be actually like this, somewhat like this. That means, it asymptotically matches to these solutions when Peclet, Peclet numbers become either very much positive or very much negative. But in the uh, intermediate values, uh, you know the curve remains highly nonlinear and uh, it would be costly for us to go for exactly satisfying it. So, what do we do? One way of handling this problem is using the art of linearization. That means, what we will do is we will try to compute a tangent here. So, the yellow line is a tangent to the green curve that is what we have done here. Okay. If you do a tangent to the green curve then what condition should it satisfy? It should satisfy the condition y minus 1 equal to dy dx at x equal to 0 times x minus 0. This would be the equation of the straight line. Okay. So, of course, it com comes from the your, uh, straight line equation forms, different forms of straight line. This is y minus y 1 by x minus x 1 kind of form equal to dy dx or m the slope of the straight line. Right. So, how do I find out dy dx? I know y equal to f x. So, d y d x which is the slope is given by uh, e to the power of x minus 1. So, minus 1 come in the index. So, it is e to the power of x minus 1 minus x e to the power of x and then e to the power of x minus 1 square here. And this then if you try to substitute x equal to 0 there again it will be a 0 by 0 indeterminate form. So, L'Hopital's rule again from where you will be able to show that this is equal to minus half. So, you take the derivatives of numerator denominator separately and put the limit it gives you minus half which means the equation of the tangent is equal to this y minus 1 equal to minus half x. Now, where does this tangent meet the two straight lines? The one straight line is y equal to 0, the other straight line is y equal to minus x. So, just solve for the points and you will find that the points of intersection will be found as x equal to minus 2 and x is equal to plus 2. So, the x equal to minus 2 conforms to very large negative Peclet numbers, x equal to plus 2 conforms to very large positive Peclet numbers. So, these are the limits. So, which means now you have essentially three straight lines is it not? So, you have a piece of straight line here, a piece of straight line here and another one which you have matched up over here in between. 
with an intercept of 1 on the y axis that is how the straight lines are coming and you know exactly that this is minus 2 and this is plus 2. This is precisely how piece wise linear approximation of the exponential variation is achieved yeah right what does that give rise to it gives rise to what is called as a hybrid scheme that means a scheme which would mix uh, mix and match that means blend central differencing with upending that is why it is called as a hybrid and how does its coefficients look like it looks like minus p if p is less than minus 2 it's equal to 1 minus p e by 2 if it lies within this range and it's equal to 0 if p e goes beyond 2 and this kind of scheme essentially switches off the diffusion term beyond modulus of peclet number greater than 2 that is what it essentially does all right now this distribution can be written in a more convenient form a more compact form form which is very convenient for uh, computer coding in this way so max of these arguments and you can check very easily that each one of these arguments when applied to the different three segments of the piecewise linear distribution will give you the appropriate value for each portion all right so this is essentially the hybrid scheme now the cutoff of the diffusion term at modulus of peclet number equal to 2 or beyond 2 rather gives rise to hybrid scheme now there was a more sophisticated scheme which was devised later and that is called as the power law scheme which set the cutoff not at 2 but beyond 2 a little further beyond 2 so what does it achieve for you it achieves something like this that if your hybrid has achieved something like this hybrid has essentially achieved something like this for you while power law shifts the cutoff further a little further all right shifts the cutoff little further which means you will go a little closer to the exponential variation the, the analytical form let us say okay so that gives you superior uh, you know calculations uh, or superior accuracy than hybrid scheme but at an additional expense but not as significant as the pure expon exponential scheme so that is the trade off now if you do that what does it come to what does the scheme come to let us try to define the scheme straight away so for the power law scheme the cutoff peclet number happens to be 10 that means on each side plus or minus 10 and the intermediate portion is patched not by a straight line but rather a power law distribution which you can clearly see from this functional form which i am currently writing So, unlike hybrid scheme where we have used all piecewise linear regions, here we use power law in the intermediate region, in the modulus peclet number great, less than 10 region. So, this is how power law functions, and that means the peclet number. Uh, is certainly considered as the switching of parameter and switches of the diffusion term at uh, mod peclet number greater than 10 and if you use the max uh, function for power law then it comes to something like this which is a little more complicated than the hybrid scheme but uh, nevertheless very easy to code in computer programs so this is how the power law functions and now let us have a quick look at the slides where we 
uh, sum up these uh, aspects. So, hybrid scheme as we said earlier that uh, it is a combination of central and upwind differencing schemes and uh, it is uh, one in which diffusion is set to 0 when Peclet, uh, when cell Peclet number exceeds 2. And of course, it is a blend between uh, the second order central differencing and the first order upwind and uh, second order uh, is applied for small Peclet number and uh, the upwind is uh, applied at higher Peclet numbers. So, that you have the transportiveness property and the solution remains bounded at larger Peclet numbers. So, this is how the two are blended together giving you a hybrid formulation. So, because the power law scheme is also a very related scheme, let us uh, go to a slide where we discuss briefly about power law. And before we do that, we, these are the properties very quickly on the hybrid scheme that it gives you a conservative formulation, it gives you boundedness because it uh, accounts for the hybridization between central and upwind. So, upwind uh, actually helps you to bring in the boundedness ne? and the transportiveness again is assured uh, at larger values of Peclet number this way and therefore, uh, solutions will remain stable even when uh, the advective effects are very strong. And uh, first order formal accuracy strictly for larger Peclet numbers, but at low Peclet numbers it would actually give you as good as second order accuracy. So, this is how it functions. For power law again, which is a little more advanced version and it actually came little later in 1980. Uh, uh, it is more accurate an approximation as we discussed earlier because of uh, approximating nearly the exponential distribution in the intermediate Peclet number range instead of using a piecewise linear approximation for the coefficients. And therefore, uh, you are expected to have more accurate approximations as a consequence. And uh, in this scheme, the diffusion is set to 0 when Peclet uh, number or the cell Peclet number exceeds 10. And uh, its conservativeness, boundedness, transportiveness and accuracy are of similar order, but accuracy is strictly speaking of a higher order than hybrid scheme because of uh, the superior approximation that we apply here in the intermediate Peclet number ranges. So, we have discussed about a number of schemes already now, which are either first order accurate or second order accurate or a blending between the two. So, now we will uh, finish our discussion with uh, another scheme where uh, little superior accuracy is possible, little more superior accuracy is possible, uh, but uh, at the expense of more computing effort that scheme is called as the quick scheme, quadratic upstream interpolation for convective kinetics, uh, which uses a quadratic fit involving three nodal points to calculate the values of phi at a particular cell phase. So, let us do a calculation on how quick scheme works. Before we do that, uh, we will just put a small grid together and show the different points which are of importance to us. So, let us say we want to compute the value of phi at the point E and the velocity is moving from left to right. In the case of quick, what we do is we take three nodes and make a quadratic fit, making sure that we have taken two upstream nodes and one downstream node in the process. So, as far as the phase E is concerned, because the flow is moving from left to right, the two upstream nodes are P and W, while one downstream node is E. All right. So, that is how the quadratic fit is made. Remember that because it is a quadratic fit, 
on a uniform grid it gives us third order formal accuracy with two points it gives second order accuracy like we have seen in central differencing with one point value it gives first order accuracy like we have seen first order upwind scheme so with three points on a uniform grid we will get third order accuracy so that's how quick is uh, certainly more superior than all the numerical schemes we have discussed uh, till now for advection diffusion equation. So, say this is half grid spacing delta x by 2 while this is 1 and so on and this is uniform grid as we mentioned already. So, let us try to fit a quadratic in this manner where we set the x equal to 0. Uh, well not here, but rather at this point at p equal at p we set x equal to 0 all right. So, if that is the case from this equation itself we can say phi p is equal to c because there x is equal to 0 right. Now, we substitute for the other nodal values. So, you will find that phi, phi w is equal to a times minus delta x square plus b times minus delta x plus c which is phi p already. Now, this becomes a delta x square minus b delta x plus phi p and then if we add the equations for ok. Before we add we write down the equation for phi e. So, for phi e it will be this. So, we have we do not have any negative signs here. So, that will help us to eliminate some of the unknowns and solve. So, if you add the two equations you can actually solve for a because b gets eliminated. So, a comes out to be like this right and then you can subtract the two equations and you can show b is equal to this right and then what you need to do is substitute these a's and b's into the original equation and then rearrange the terms. After you do that what do you come up with? You come up with an expression like this mm, ok. What we will do is we will straight away write an expression for phi e by substituting the value of x is equal to delta x by 2 in the quadratic because you have already solved for a, b and c. So, you now have the quadratic in that quadratic you just substitute x is equal to delta x by 2. If you do that you will get phi e. So, what will phi e come out to be? It will be phi e plus phi w minus 2 phi p by 2 delta x square into this plus phi e minus phi w by 2 delta x into delta x by 2 plus phi p. So, this will be the value at the east face. If you just rearrange the terms this can be written in an index form. If I consider the nodal point p as i then this gives me the indices phi i plus 1, phi i, phi i minus 1 and so on right. So, this is the form of quick all right for the east phase value of phi ok. You can similarly calculate for the west phase of phi and you can calculate for flow moving from right to left also. If you go back to the slide you can actually have a look at that format here. So, in this slide you can easily see that for flow moving from left to right this is how phi w can be worked out from flow moving from left to right this is how phi e can be worked out 
So, this is f greater than 0, this is f greater than 0 and these are for f less than 0. So, this is the phi w expression for f less than 0. Again, phi e expression for f less than 0. So, from that one equation that we have worked out now, we can actually derive all these equations just by shifting it by half cell width. Right, or rather one cell width. That means, if I have worked out this, the um, phi at i plus half, in that expression if I substitute i equal to i minus 1, then I get i minus half and therefore, I can generate the expressions for east and west faces, both for f greater than 0 and f less than 0. That is how it all works. Right. So, if that is the thing, then we have now understood how we can even apply quick to our transport equation. So, let us go to our transport equation and try to apply quick to it and see what happens. Again, as I mentioned many times earlier that the right hand side, the diffusive part, we continue to do a CDS, the central differencing second order. right? And we are considering f greater than 0. So, phi e is 3 by 8 phi capital E phi plus 6 by 8 phi p minus 1 by 8 phi w. So, that is phi e and the phi w can be similarly written as 3 by 8 phi p plus 6 by 8 phi w minus 1 8 phi w w. That means, the node to the west of the w node. All right. So, now you have to collect all the terms and get the coefficients. So, for phi p what do I get as coefficients? I get these terms put together gives me the a p. So, this whole expression gives me a p. Obviously, it is getting more complicated because I have a quadratic interpolation now. So, that gives me phi e times d e minus 3 8, 3 8 f e plus phi w times f e by 8 plus 6 by 8 f w plus d w plus phi w w times minus f w by 8. So, this is what you get. All right. So, what is the outcome of this? It gives us some very, very important clues out here. We have a situation similar to what we found in the central differencing that there is a, there is a case where this coefficient can become negative. Actually, we can easily show that as Peclet number, the cell Peclet number exceeds 8 by 3, this coefficient will become negative, which is a recipe for problem, numerical instability, lack of boundedness and this inevitably will remain negative all the time. right? As long as e u is from left to right, that means f is positive. So, then what is the difficulty with this situation? The situation leads to negative coefficients and therefore, this will lead to lack of boundedness. And therefore, though it has a higher formal order of accuracy, quick scheme would develop certain numerical instabilities if we are not very careful about the cell Peclet number limit. Thank you very much.